you are very fortunate to be able to hear from the, the Japanese startup entrepreneurs and uh, um, uh, those people who are really uh, making change happen in, in Japan and, and in the globe. So in the beginning, I'd like to just to talk briefly about uh, what's happening in Asia, broader Asia, but in particular Japan. So if you uh, take a look at the capitalism in any society, of course there's a, a demand side and a supply side. So I'd like to talk first about the uh, supply side a little bit, and I mean the supply side of capital, and, the demand, and then the demand side, which is a main uh, topic of discussion for this morning's session. So on the supply side of capital, this is something that you already know. So I'm going to kind of skip through this uh, very quickly. But as you know, uh, the size of impact investing is growing uh, globally and everywhere. And uh, if you take a look at the, the chart here, uh, you see the uh, South Asia, East Asia, and Southeast Asia. Uh, this is uh, uh, a kind of area that, uh, where the impact investing is, hap is actually happening. So that's also uh, very growing uh, regions and sub-regions. Of course, there's a strong demand in those societies. So uh, I think uh, many of you are really interested in, in this area and also uh, maybe practicing impact investing already. Unfortunately yet, um, the, the movers and shakers of impact, uh, the uh, headquarters, if you take a look at the headquarters locations, Asia is pretty small still yet. And on the right hand side, you take a look at the GSG National Advisory Board, uh, 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 Global Steering Group for Impact Investing. Uh, you see Japan, Korea, Bangladesh, uh, India, Sri Lanka, and if you include the, pac the Pacific, Australia, and New Zealand, and Turkey is a newcomer in the, in the NAB, uh, National Advisory Board. So it's a growing region in terms of the, 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 the ownership of uh, impact investing these days too. If you then take a look at Japan, uh, Japan also uh, see, sees a, a growth and tremendous growth of impact investing these days, even though it's still very small compared to uh, you know, what's happening globally. Uh, it is equi equivalent of a 3.4% of the global impact investing market, so it's small you know, compared to the, the size of the economy of Japan. But if you can look at the, the, the graph, uh, it's really growing very, very rapidly, and it's very accelerating. So this is what's happening on the, on the supply side of the capital. And if you have questions, of course, I can, you can grab me and I can talk more about what's happening in Japan. And these are the, the regions and sectors. Uh, sorry about the small letters, but if you uh, take a look at the um, investee sector, health, healthcare, climate change mitigation, support for small and medium-sized businesses, women's empowerment, uh, quality education and parenting, climate challenge and adapt uh, adaptation, infrastructure, urban development. These are the sectors the Japanese investors are looking, uh, are interested in. As you can see, you, know, you might not find so many differences between what's, uh, what's the interest in Japan and abroad, but of course Japan is an aging society and that really affects the health and healthcare uh, uh, sector, which is really the one uh, people are really paying attention to. So those are the things that are happening on the supply side of the capital. Now let's take a look at the, the demand side. And here we are uh, focusing on startups. So this is a, a graph provided by METI, the Japanese government. Uh, but uh, the startup uh, is really growing and the fundraising is, uh, is, is a, a testimony to that. Uh, in the past 10 years, you see the tenfold growth in the startup capital. And as you might uh, have heard, uh, uh, the current administration, Kisa administration, is uh, speaking about a new form of capitalism, within which uh, the government has this uh, startup promotion five-year plan. So in this plan, uh, we, uh, in, in Japan, public and private sectors together 
uh, it's trying to really increase the startup funding by a tenfold by 2027, uh, which means uh, uh, we are aiming at 100,000 startups uh, by the year 2027. So this is uh, uh, something that uh, an area that the Japanese government is really uh, trying to work on uh, with, uh, with its focus and energy. And within which, within which the Japanese startups, there are more and more attention, growing attention to what we call the, uh, the, the start impact startups. And the, the reason for this, which is something that maybe I don't have to explain too much, is really to, uh, for, for sustainable society, again, in Japan and abroad. And um, there are three uh, key areas of, of, of uh, attention that the uh, Japanese government is, is uh, uh, focusing on. One is the, uh, the, the issue of scale. How, do we, uh, how are we going to be able to use the capitalism system to make sure that the things that happen in, in one corner of the society can be scaled to, for, for a greater impact, of course. And then, you know, if you take a look at the right-hand side, as it says, many young aspiring entrepreneurs. So uh, we are very much focusing on the youth. Not so much the physical age, but the more like a mental attitude of you know, making things happen, making things change, and there's a lot of energy around that. And um, in, um, the third one, increased entrepreneurship in rural areas. This is also something might, that might be unique to Japan uh, because of the, uh, the, the uh, population decline and uh, uh, community um, um, we, we really need to work on the community revitalization, and we are very, very much focusing on economic revitalization of uh, various communities. So those are the three uh, different uh, sectors or areas that uh, uh, we are very, very much interested in to, for sustainable society, again, in Japan and abroad. So with that, um, the government started uh, this uh, J Startup Impact program in 2023, this year. And this is a program for training impact startup companies from, um, and then you know, these are the uh, companies that have been chosen uh, to be the impact startups uh, for this year. And unfortunately, I was on the selection committee uh, of this process and was very thrilled, excited, uh, and then encouraged very much by the energy, talent, enthusiasm, and the practical, wis practical wisdom, not just the theory, but the, you know, how to you know, put things into practice by these companies. And again, you're very fortunate here today, this morning, to be able to get the sample of, uh, of uh, their work um, because of the, the, the five people that uh, will be uh, speaking uh, right after this. And uh, as Atsushi mentioned, um, this program, J Star X, uh, dispatches young entrepreneurs and capitalists to, to top uh, startup ecosystem worldwide. So here we have 20 people uh, attending from, from this program, but, but there are others who, are, uh, uh, who have been dispatched to other parts of the world as well to really learn, to really exchange views and opinions, and then you know, to talk about the future, to really um, you know, collaborate possibly uh, for the future and, uh, uh, of the globe and the for sustainable society. So I hope that was a, a, tea, a teeing up of the, the very exciting um, uh, uh, speakers, uh, five speakers that uh, will be speaking uh, right after this. So thanks for listening. Thank you, Mr. Imata. So let's move on to the next session. Uh, I'm happy to introduce five entrepreneurs as a representative of each uh, section. So the first speaker is Kunihiro Shimoji from EF Polymer. Morning, guys. Uh, my name is Kuni Shimoji. I'm the CEO of EF Polymer, eco-friendly Polymer. Uh, we empower farmers to fight against drought, 
to promote sustainable agriculture. Please remember three things out of this conversation. Uh, we EF polymer produces 100% natural and biodegradable super absorbent polymer, which is optimized for sustainable agriculture. We help farmers decrease water and their fertilizer uses and increase yield by 15%. And we are your partner for your company's sustainable transformation in agriculture and beyond. As you know, 45% of the world population is facing drought today. And 70% of the water available for human use is actually used for agriculture. When you combine those two things, what happened is a lot of water stress for farmers. Drought is causing 30 to 40 percent yield decrease, and the, as you know, world farmers, most of them are individual or family-owned small-scale farmers, they're actually hit severely by this situation. To solve this situation, we are fortunate that we were able to uh, develop this patented solution, 100 percent natural and biodegradable water and fertilizer retainer. And the, one of the unique things about our product is that it is actually made out of the bio waste, such as orange peels and banana peels, and they often cause CO2 emission during their disposal process. And we upcycle 10 ton of orange peel to produce one ton of our product. And one gram can absorb up to 50 gram of water, and then it absorbs and releases water in soil for six months, and then it's completely gone, biodegrades in a year. With our product, we help farmers not only uh, environmentally sustainable, but economically sustainable solution. We help farmers to reduce water by 40% and 20% of fertilizer, and they help them increase yield by 15%. We envision that we want to produce this circular economy, upcycling locally collected orange peels and banana peels and beyond, and then produce our polymer, and they help farmers, and then create our polymer again with the residue from the farmers. We're more than that. We are more than agriculture as well. We, with our patented solution and the hydrogel we create with this patented polymer, we can help transform many industry to be more sustainable. We have sales and licensing, and then we're working with more than 12,000 farmers in five different nations. We have a physical presence in Japan and India, and then one of our focuses are US, France, and Thailand. Thank you so much, and if you are interested in our technology and the potential collaboration, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shimozi. And the second entrepreneur is Kota Takaoka from ICANN. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Kota. Uh, CEO of ICANN Incorporation. I love to talk about the technology to protect children from child abuse. So let's begin. First of all, child abuse is a common social issue in the world. To save children, investigation itself is so important, but it is so difficult. Why? I'm going to show you the example. Parents hit their children physically, but they say that. Oh, my kids might fall down from the slope in the park. You know what I mean? And 80% of child abuse death case is happened in zero to one years old babies. Therefore, they cannot talk anything developmentally yet. Therefore, Quality of decision making by professionals is really, really important. So how can we ameliorate it? Here's the solutions. We offer the ICANN service, including the two different types of applications and uh, uh, customer success. ICANN application includes ICT and AI, 
then data-driven on-site support, such as evidence-based training, effective research, and evidence-based policy-making support. Here is the futures. Supporting operational efficiency. If social workers find bruises and injuries on children's body, they can input the data along the application guide, which part of the body is injured, what type of injuries is it? When they input the data, simultaneously stored on the database, the information share with other agencies as well. So users say that investigate seamlessly, share information promptly. They are also supporting the improvement of additional quality. In addition to the previous data, social worker and any professional input the risk factor data about children, parents, and the others. Based on the past response record, AI conducted simulations. Then, data-driven information for decision-making is present. The user said that a serious case is not overlooked and appropriate responses can be conducted. The feature three, promotes evidence-informed practice cycle. This is most important things to deploy a tech-based approach. First of all, issue identification should be conducted. Then, we start education and training, technology deployment, and measurement impact, and update attack practice in both sides. Here's the last slide. Vision, making a change to create a safer world for all children. So let's create a solution together. I really love to talk with uh, administrative persons, in investors, and philanthropists to save children. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Takoka. And the third speaker is uh, Carlos Oba from DOTS4. Hello, good morning. My name is Carlos Oba, the CEO and co-founder of DOTS4 Inc. So we are revolutionizing the lives of the African rural village people by the power of the telecom technologies. As you may know, African village, there is no infrastructure because of the low income companies are not interested in because no profitability in these areas. For that, no water, no electricity, but no internet connection, telecommunication, and that leads them poor opportunity, poor information, and uh, for opportunities. So we change their situation by putting this size of the network box in each village and build a ultra cheap Wi-Fi infrastructure and selling the smartphone and provide them digital services. Now, local version of Netflix is available in each African villages. And we provide such service as a B2C subscription with a uh, install payment of the smartphone. We receive weekly payment directly from the individual village people with their mobile money technology available in many African countries. And also, we gather the data of individual village people through our system uh, with our service and with our smartphone. Gather this information, put in the algorithm, and calculate the credit score, and provide the uh, financial services with, with ultra high repayment ratio. And also, since, as I mentioned, the telecom company cannot enter the rural area because of the profitability problem, but we can. We are pretty profitable in this low-income area, whereas the telecom company cannot. We could recoup our initial investment within 10 months. And we become a big uh, company through our system uh, by providing them not only the digital services, uh, not only the video subscription, but also we can connect them to the cities and the more bigger economy, like a US, Japan, the developed countries, and provide them the job opportunity to earn more income from bigger economies. And we have operating in two years, and operating in Benin and Senegal, uh, more than 100 villages in Africa, and both countries we have monetizing, and some of the villages we succeeded to realize our unit economics. And also, many of them are interested in to work with us, and half of them 
who experienced our service as a free trial period turned into the paid users. And some of them who especially watching the videos, training videos, can increase their income by 50 to 80%. And also uh, with our algorithm, 10% or more high repayment ratio. So we're looking for partners who are also interested in the African market, also investors who want to jump into this project. So we thought for changing the lives of the people by the power of the technology. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the next speaker is Takehiro Asakura from TBM. Hi. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Takehiro Asakura from TBM Japan. I am so proud that uh, I am standing here to make a presentation about TBM. So TBM is one of the Japanese unicorn startups, and we intend to address several environmental issues such as uh, uh, water, resource, water security or global warming and by distributing Limex, a limestone-based uh, new sustainable material. So TBM uh, succeeded in developing limestone-based new material, and, uh, li which can be used as plastic or paper alternative items. Limex contains 50% plus of limestone powder and resin for the remaining portion. And uh, yeah. And so far, we have been trading with over 10,000 uh, companies, and we developed uh, diverse applications listed here. For example, by, uh, with Limex, we can provide shopping bags or toys or cosmetic containers or food containers as well. So this time, we, I brought some Limex products from Japan, and I will display some of uh, them at our booth. So please drop in at our booth after this session if you have interest in it. So let me share some environmental impact numbers here. So firstly, as paper alternative, Limex sheet can save as much as 97% of water usage. And uh, Limex sheet does not require any forest resources. So uh, Limex sheet has uh, environmental impact. And then as plastic alternative items, uh, Limex uh, can save uh, plastic usage as a result, uh, we can reduce our GHG emissions uh, on the life cycle assessment base. So as you consume Limex products, you can um, realize positive environmental impact. And even with one-time usage, Limex has environmental impact, but uh, Limex can show its full potential by recycling. And from this spring, we started a new business to offer uh, upcycling of post-consumer Limex waste and plastic waste. And Limex is now gaining uh, global recognition through global, conference, global conferences listed here. Of course, I will uh, add uh, as for this uh, page next time. So for closing my presentation, uh, please reach out to, me, out to me if you have interest in, uh, in using Limex for your product. And we are now uh, doing fundraising. So please let me know if you have interest in investing in TBM. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the last speaker is Takayuki Ishii from uh, Shirase. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Takayuki Ishii from the Ashirase Inc. Uh, let me introduce you to the Ashirase, what is the uh, service for them. Uh, first, how, did, how have you come here uh, today? By bus, by taxi, by airplane? But all of you were walking. So, but however, in all of the world, it is a little bit difficult people. It's uh, more than 252 million. They are visually impaired. What is the problem for them? The people visually impaired are desperately needed to concentrate on staying safe and not taking the long route when they want to go somewhere slowly. But it's really difficult. 
you can imagine it very easy. When you're watching TV in your house, you cannot hear what your family said. It is very common things. So how we can solve this problem? We, Ashirase, is the service for IoT. It is a concept of the native app and the device. This is very simple. Uh, user, uh, when user wants to go somewhere, they put on the shoes with Ashirase and enter the destination to the app. After that, walk along the vibration. So, the as a result, they taught their uh, time reductions. It's very powerful for them because the preparing time is shorter. Uh, it is very near from the near to the, uh, the people side thing, and also the total working time is really short. And we have uh, more than 100 beta users. They uh, give us a good feedback. Around 80% of users uh, report positive changes on their life. And also, they uh, give them, uh, they give us their uh, feedback as a shown edit test. So more than 40% of users answered, it is very disappointed if they cannot use Asherase tomorrow. But where it, uh, is there any other service like us? My answer is no today. And now we are preparing to uh, have a uh, land business for next year. The business model is preparing now, but we want to keep it simple. Okay, we as uh, say create a world where every step taken by the people visually impaired is a uh, joyful and their journey. The last, uh, okay, thank you very much.